In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to create a three column card layout in a repeating group with an image as a background uh, and using the new responsive engine. Let's jump in. Okay, so I created a new page in Bubble. I'm just going to upgrade to the new responsive engine. Fantastic, now that it is upgraded, let's grab the inspector. So I've just named the page RG Cards, and on the layout, I have set the width of the UI builder to 1280. I've set an arbitrary height to 900, it doesn't matter, we just need some space to work within. I'm going to grab a repeating group element, drop it on the page. Okay, so the layout I'm after is just some columns. Okay, one row, some columns. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to go into the appearance and I'm going to query my database. I've added some location data, so images, names, prices, that kind of thing. So just put in some locations. Um, I'm going to remove this. I'm just going to say set the min height to 100%. So you can see that it's gone top to bottom now. I'm going to uncheck the fixed number of columns. I'm going to set this rather to a 320 pixel min width. 320 is divisible in 1280 four times. Okay, over on the layout tab, my cell container will just be a column. Doesn't matter, it's just a single object I have in there. So I'm not stacking anything. I'll have a parent group container that just needs to be centered within that repeating group cell. I'm going to choose horizontally align this repeating group. Okay, it's not fixed width, but I only want it to stretch to 1280. No wider than that. And the min width is actually controlled. The min width of the cell will be set on the group I'm going to put into the cell shortly. So the height is going to be 600. This is just a design choice. And lastly, I'm just going to set a top margin of 100, just so it's not, you know, busting up against the top. Okay, so that's for our repeating group design. Let's grab a group, drop it inside the first cell. I'm going to choose a line to parent for this because a line to parent is going to allow us to put another group and push the group to the bottom or position the group at the bottom as opposed to a column or, or a row which always starts at the top. A line to parent allows us to actually put groups and elements where we want to specifically, whether it's top left hand corner, bottom right hand corner, straight at the bottom. In our case, straight to the bottom. Now this is important here. So I'm going to uncheck fixed width. You can see that it actually fills the space. So you can see this group more easily. I'm going to change to a wireframe style so you can see the group, okay? Now the min width is going to be 280 and I'll get back to you in a second about why I've done this. 280, no max width. I'm going to uncheck fit height to content so that it just spans, you know, the full height of that cell and I'm going to remove the min height as well. So this is where 1280 comes into it because I've said on the repeating group itself, I've said the min width of the column is 320. When the column hits that width, then break beneath it basically. And back in this group here, I've said the min width is 280 and not 320 because I want to add 20 padding on the left, sorry, 20 pixels of margin on the left, 20 pixels of margin on the right. I keep saying padding, sometimes you'll hear me say padding because effectively this is what I'm creating. I'm creating a pair of padding uh, I'm creating padding for this group within a cell. So Bubble doesn't have a padding system, so I create it using margins basically. Anyway, let's use Bubble Speak. So we're using 20, 20 pixels of left and right margin. So 20 plus 20 is 40, plus 280, the width edge to edge here, gives you 320. Then I'm just going to add 20 pixels of margin to the bottom, and that should do it. All right, so what else am I going to do? On the Appearance tab, I'm just going to add... I'm now going to remove the style because I want to use an image as the background. So I'm going to go pull in my default image, which is the current cell's locations image. 
I'm going to center my image. I'm going to make the image as wide as a parent element, but I'm not going to crop in. And then lastly, I'm going to add 10 pixels of roundness to the corner. Let's preview the page and see what we have. Okay, so we've got some data on the page. This is not quite the design I'm after. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to click on this group, and I'm going to set a min height of 600 pixels tall. And if we look at this again, that's looking much better. Now, I only want to work with three. So I, on the repeating group itself, I'm just going to say, from item number two, I actually want to exclude the first one. This one here it doesn't really have that outdoor look that I'm after. So just show me uh, two, three, and four. So I have four rows in the database. Perfect. There we go. Nice, even shape. 600 pixels tall. Now, what we're going to do next is add some text. Now, you've noticed that I've actually chosen dark images on purpose so that my whiter text can show up and the text will be at the bottom. And we chose a line to parent so that it we can position the text at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna have two pieces of text, so I'm not going to let them float around on their own. Instead, I'm gonna just draw a group in this group. You can see a line to parent is activated and it's in the center and I can push this group around wherever I like. Let me change this to a wire. I want to position at the bottom and I want it 40 pixels from the left and 40 pixels from the right and 40 from the bottom and then I want it edge to edge so I'm going to remove this container layout and I'm going to choose a column because I'm going to be stacking two text elements on top of each other. Now I can say make this fix width, no thank you, I want it to go edge to edge, remove all of this stuff. And I'm going to leave this just for a second. But if I refresh the page, we'll see a blue group positioned where we want because we chose align to parent. Okay, well, I can see it, but obviously it's not very clear. Let me just make this, let's change the color to, let's do 50% white. And then we can, well, we actually would have seen that when we have 50%. Let's just make sure this looks how we'd like it to. Yeah, there we go. So 40, 40, 40. Now for the text, I'm going to bring in some text. The dynamic data is the parent group's thing. What is the parent group? Well, we need to set this up. So I'm going to say location, pull in the current cells location, and then link in the location of this group. So we're feeding data through from the repeating group into the parent group, now into the child group. And now that we have data in the child group, we can pull that in from the database. So parent groups, locations, title, and remove the style because I would like to style this. Go to enter, let's choose 700. Let's try 32 pixels. I'm going to make that white. No line spacing because it will only show in a single line over on the layout, going to uncheck fixed width. I want it edge to edge. The group itself is giving this text its margins. Okay, the group itself. I'm going to remove the min height and say fit height to content, yes. We have too much height here. We only need max height, we only need 32. Bubble's forcing all of this because it's trying to show the dynamic path name in here. Parent groups, locations, title. This is just going to say Los Angeles or Cape Town or something. So I know that my text itself is 32 pixels. So I'm just going to set the max height to 32 pixels. Okay, let me copy and paste this so I can bring in the price, copy, paste. I'm going to set 20 pixels of top margin to separate the two. I'm going to change the appearance of this slightly. I'm just going to say 28 pixels tall. And this is also, I'm going to set the max height here to 28. 
and on the group itself, I'm going to now remove the min height and watch what happens. Boom. It's only the group has collapsed to the height of the two elements within. And this is where I can change the style just to nonsense transparent. And let's refresh the page. Okay, last thing we need to do is just change this text to price and format it as US dollars currency, no decimal places with a dollar sign. So let's do one more preview and then we're going to have a look at responsive as well. Fantastic, that looks perfect to me. Let's have a look at responsive. It's going to use Chrome developer tools for this. Let's break it down to um, mobile. Look at this, nice and stacked. Perfect, even margin all around these cards. That's just what I wanted. Even down at 320, we can still see these images nicely. Remember that we chose on these images, we chose to center the image, which means that it's always going to find the center of the image. Look how nice that looks. Okay, well, that was just a little introduction about how to design some really nice cards in the in Bubble's new responsive engine in a repeating group. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, always choose the best images you can for this kind of thing and try to edit the images in Photoshop or Illustrator or Figma before you bring them in, specifically if they're static images and you have control. Uh, for this tutorial, I specifically chose some much darker images so that the white text would show. So don't forget to pay attention to that as well.